Welcome back to the Awakening with Kelvin Peary podcast and this is another episode in our Bridges to Prosperity series where we discuss the future of Africa, one conversation at a time. Today we are tackling a critical issue that affects millions of Zambians daily, load shedding. Will it ever end? And if so, how? This is a topic that affects businesses, schools, hospitals and everyday households. Power ads disrupt productivity, drive up the cost of doing business, and make life unnecessarily difficult. But what if I told you that Zambia is actively working on solutions? The government has now opened up the energy sector to private companies, allowing for more competition and investment, and in Luapula province, an exciting initiative is underway to explore biogas as a sustainable energy source. So, in this episode, we'll explore the real causes of Zambia's power shortages, the latest developments in energy solutions, and what practical steps we can take to achieve energy security. Stick around, because we'll be unpacking the facts, not just the frustrations. Why does Zambia face power shortages? To understand why we have load shedding, we first need to identify the root causes of Zambia's power shortages is it just about low rainfall or are there deeper systemic issues? Historically, Zambia has relied heavily on hydropower with over 80% of its electricity coming from sources like the Kariba Dam, Kafue Gorge and Iteji Iteji. While hydropower is a clean and renewable energy source, it comes with a major vulnerability, weather dependency. During dry seasons and droughts, water levels in the dams drop, this problem has become even more severe in recent years. Another key issue is infrastructure. Zambia's energy sector has struggled with outdated power plants and transmission lines that have not been modernized to keep up with the growing population and economic expansion. Even when power is generated, losses occur due to inefficiencies in distribution networks. The increasing demand for electricity is also a challenge. Zambia's economy is growing, industries are expanding, and urbanization is accelerating. This means more people and businesses need electricity, but supply has not expanded at the same pace. The mining sector alone consumes a significant portion of Zambia's energy, and with new industries emerging, the strain on the grid is only increasing. Additionally, Zambia exports power to neighboring countries under regional agreements. While this generates revenue, it sometimes puts pressure on local supply, contributing to load shedding. To address this, the government must find a balance between honoring these agreements and ensuring domestic energy security. Zambia opens up energy sector to private investment. One of the biggest recent developments in Zambia's energy sector is that the government has now opened it up to private companies. This is a game changer because for years the state-owned power company Zesco has been the dominant player in electricity generation and distribution. While Zesco has made significant contributions, it has also struggled with inefficiencies and financial constraints that have limited its ability to expand power generation capacity. Now, private companies are being encouraged to enter the energy market and invest in power generation projects. This move is expected to bring in much needed capital, innovation and efficiency. It also means that Zambia would no longer be entirely dependent on government-run power projects. We are likely to see more solar farms, independent hydropower projects, and even new energy technologies being introduced by private investors. Hmm. This shift opens up opportunities for alternative energy sources, which leads us to the exciting news coming out of Luapula. Luapula exploring biogas as a sustainable energy solution. In recent developments, the Luapula Water and Sanitation Company is exploring the potential of harnessing biogas from its sewerage systems. 
This initiative aims to convert waste into a renewable energy source, providing a sustainable alternative to traditional power generation methods. By utilizing biogas technology, the company seeks to enhance energy security in the region while promoting environmental sustainability. Biogas production involves the breakdown of organic matter, such as sewage, in an oxygen-free environment, resulting in the release of methane-rich gas. This gas can be captured and used for electricity generation, heating or as a fuel for vehicles. Implementing such technology in Luapula could reduce reliance on hydropower and diversify the province's energy mix. If this initiative proves successful, it could serve as a model for other provinces across Zambia. Not only does it address waste management challenges, but it also contributes to the broader goal of achieving energy security in the country. This project represents a forward-thinking approach to solving Zambia's power crisis, showing that local solutions can play a major role in national energy resilience. For more details on this development, you can visit the ZNBC Today Facebook page where they have shared updates on the Luapula Water and Sanitation Company's biogas project. What more can be done to achieve energy security? While these developments are promising, Zambia still has a long way to go in achieving full energy security. Diversifying our energy sources remains the most critical solution. Solar energy is one of the biggest opportunities available to Zambia, with high levels of sunshine throughout. Wind energy should also be explored in areas with strong wind currents. Countries around the world are making significant investments in wind power and Zambia should not be left behind. Additionally, modernizing existing infrastructure is essential. The government and private sector must invest in upgrading power plants, transmission lines and substations to reduce energy losses and improve efficiency. Even if we generate more electricity, it will be meaningless if a large percentage is lost due to outdated infrastructure. Will load shedding ever end? So, will Zambia ever be free from load shedding? The answer is yes. But only if we commit to long-term solutions rather than quick fixes. The steps taken to open up the energy sector to private investment and explore new solutions like biogas in Luapula are encouraging, but they need to be scaled up and supported with the right policies and investments. If Zambia continues on this path, diversifying energy sources, modernizing infrastructure and encouraging private investment, then the future of our energy sector looks bright. However, this will require political will, financial commitment and a collective effort from both the government and citizens. The power crisis is not just a government issue, it affects all of us. And if we want change, we must push for sustainable energy solutions, demand accountability, and take personal steps to reduce strain on the national grid. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Awakening with Kelvin Perry podcast, part of the Bridges to Prosperity series. If you found this discussion insightful, don't forget to share it with others. Now, I want to hear from you. What do you think Zambia should do to solve its power crisis? Drop your thoughts in the comments, send me a message or engage with me on social media. Until next time, stay informed, stay empowered and let's keep building bridges to prosperity. See you in the next episode.